Hello. Good evening. We are six of one. I'm like a minute late, so I was trying to help somebody find this. It's been a long day, so the hair is up. I don't have, actually, I do have a, a shirt on. It does. It has the sheep on it. It's on. It's just underneath today. But it's been a long day, so I just got home from the vet. Um, but, oh, let me pull this up on my computer so I can see comments. And I've got what we're working on on the computer as well. Oh, I saw a like button go up. Do, 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 do. Okay, there it is. All right. Well, I got my video up. Maybe I can see the comments. Maybe. Oh, Facebook changed again, of course. So the live videos show up differently than they used to. Interesting. Good practice for my sale on Sunday because it's been a little bit. Okay. Oh, there we go. Maybe? Yes. Mm -hmm. We froze for a moment. If it happens again, I'll take us off Wi-Fi, but all right. Well, I kind of found where the comments are. So I think we should be good to go, hopefully. All right, my computer's still not updated, but I can see myself. Okay, maybe? You know that rural internet's really helping. All right, well, I'm hoping it's back up. But, so we started our project last week. The lighting's not great this way, but it'll be better when you're looking down on it. So this is going to be our deer in the forest, and I have my original pictures. Do, 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 do. My inspiration photo. And I printed off another one tonight. I blew up the deer a little bit so I can see it. And I have it on my computer so I can see both, hopefully. Um, so what I have done since the last week. Last week we wet felted this. And all I've done since then is I rinsed it out and set it to dry. And... Oh, somebody's commenting and I cannot see these comments. What is going on? Oh, there it is. Okay. Found it. Okay. Marion says we're good. Hopefully. My computer is just apparently not showing that I'm talking, which is fine. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? Oh, we wet felt up. Okay. I switched off the Wi-Fi, I think, right? Yeah, I switched off the Wi-Fi, so hopefully that'll work better. It won't be so, um, won't freeze and pause. So I'm going to just put us down to the working area because I'm tired of looking at myself and it's time to get to felting already. Okay. All right, so you can see I've got my, my photo sitting here. Do do and everything else. Got some wool ready. Trying to make sure we're set up good enough so you can see what I'm doing. I have to bring this out a teens. Just bear with me. Oh. You know what? Apparently the world's telling me I shouldn't have done this tonight because <laughs> everything's glitching. All right, that's better. There we go. I am sorry. 
we're getting there. Doing lives is always so fun and interesting. There's no editing. It's just exactly how I am. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, and this turned out to be a nice size. It's actually much bigger than my embroidery hoop that I'm planning on putting it in, which is fine. I can just trim it how I want. Um, what's going on? There it goes. Or I might get a bigger embroidery hoop in the end. Or throw it in a picture frame. But I have this here. So I'm going to set that to the side. Um, and I'm going to try and focus on mostly this deer tonight. So I've got my picture here. So maybe I'll set this over here so you guys can kind of see. Yeah, there we go. Alright, before I got on tonight, I went and blended some colors for the deer. Because last week I was having a hard time matching color. This actually matches the deer pretty well. It matches better than what the camera shows. And I got this lighter one too. That um, looks good. This picture actually looks much better in person. Color-wise, it matches. So I want to make sure I had different shades. So there's actually like three different shades. This is a light color and then this is um, like a medium. And this is a bit darker. But I do have some darker like brown as well. So I've got lots of colors here. And we just started out with kind of a basic shape of this deer last week. So now I'm going to shape it out even more. And I'm going to start with kind of a base layer to lay out like the the neck and the head a little bit more. Because that's going to be the main focus. The rest of this body, I'll put some shading in here a little bit more to kind of give like legs or like a part of the leg up here. Um but it's going to be mostly covered by like plants and greenery. So we're going to focus on the neck and the head. This is not one of my matching colors, but I'm going to use it kind of as the base color. And then I'll use, because I don't have a lot of my other colors, I'll use little bits when I need to. So... When I wet felt this, it actually worked out pretty nice, um, the shape did. And like the start of the neck here. But I'm just going to use a little bit of wool at a time and kind of shape this out. Now, I tend to eyeball a lot of stuff. Another way I could do this is, um, which I do sometimes, is I'll take a picture and like size it to the size of what I'm actually working on, which would actually need to be a little bit smaller. Um, and then I can just cut out this little outline and then use that to like exactly either make like a trace of it or just use it to the size to see, you know, how exactly I'm doing. So it's proportionate. But I tend to eyeball a lot of stuff. Which does occasionally get me in trouble, but, you know, that's okay. If I don't like it, I pull it off and I do it again. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a neck started here. So 
So right here is kind of where the side of the head is. Then we go up into the ear and around and up. And we go around and back down. Oh gosh, this reminds me of watching um Rudolph during Christmas time. And for some reason this year when we were watching the like the old regular animated or not animated, but it's like the stop motion, I think it's called the original Rudolph. We watched it and I was I was looking at the characters. I'm like, these could be like little felted animals. Like they could totally, you could make them. And they kind of look felt like. And so I was like researching, looking stuff up, trying to figure out what they were made of. And I think what it ended up being is that they were made of like leather and some sort of armature. So of course they could bend and, you know, shape how they moved and then I think it was like some felt fabrics and whatnot too so it could be they could be partially wool but for some reason it just sparked my interest more I don't know if we got to watching it last year or not Right, so we got one ear, and we're going to go up into another ear. Oh, oh, um, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I don't know why, they really look like they could be, I was, I almost started needle felting little Rudolph characters immediately, but then I was like, ah, nah, <laughs> we're not going to get obsessed with that. <laughs> um... So, lamb updates. For those of you who have seen, if you haven't been following, we started lambing this past week. Um, we just had a couple more babies today. And we are up to 10 so far. Five sets of twins, which is really good. I love having twins. Twins is good. Singles okay, but I'm tending to get rid of ewes that have single lambs. Because it generally is, like, genetically that they'll have a single compared to twins. So it's more profitable, of course, to have a ewe that has two lambs instead of one. Um, and triplets are just a pain because generally you have to supplement or completely bottle feed one. At least with the breeds that I raise. So, 10 babies. And I'm trying a new thing this year. I decided I want to try to take um, a photo of every single lamb that we have this year. Or at least one of, like, you know, out of a set of twins. I'm trying to be really good and, like, putting them in a folder on my phone so I don't lose it. And so far, so good. I didn't get to go over and see the new ones tonight. But I've kept up on it. So far, I think. Did I do the new ones? Must have done the other ones. There were some born, like, not yesterday, but like two nights ago. But they're still in the stall. I need to, like, label the photos so I know who's who and if I've done them. Because once we get, you know, closer to a hundred lambs, it's going to be kind of hard to tell. Okay, so we're getting the right shape here.
Okay. So I saw, I just saw something. I saw somebody post on some needle felting page on Facebook today um, asking about how you get the edges of your like 2D felting projects like this, um, like along an edge. How do you get it like the fuzzy pieces or the wool sticking out to not stick out per se? So um, like if you're felting, you know, straight down along an edge, but you still have some fibers that are like going out that way. What I do, which is really, um, it's pretty simple. Well, there's two ways to do it. You could either like felt at an angle along that edge a little bit more, like at a shallower angle, um, or something that I've done like from when I started felting as I like swirl my needle around the edge and like grab the fibers that are just hanging out in the air. And then push them in. A lot of times that needle will just grab those fibers. So hopefully that made sense. I was trying to see if I had any fibers like that here in this piece. Like, doop, I'll zoom you in a little bit. There's like some kind of fuzzy pieces here. And it's harder to see on the live video, but... If I kind of swirl my needle around them and then I can push them where I want. Kind of like that. Okay, so I've got my basic shape. Now I can start adding, adding in like the right colors and whatnot. So I think I'm going to start with the neck here and kind of fill in the colors of the neck and then focus on the head. Um, I tend to always do the head first because it's the main focus. And if that's not right, the rest of it's not going to work out. So I want to do kind of like the shading under the head first. So I'm not filling that in after because sometimes if you fill it in after, then it will look like higher then the head and I don't want that so I'm going to just tilt this down a little bit more okay got my colors all right so the neck and the picture is really dark because it's a shaded spot I'm gonna pull off some of my darker color here And see, this color is just a little bit more of like, just a little bit more of like an orangey tint to it, I would say. And when I use a picture, I want it to match the picture, so that's what it's going to be for this one. Not necessarily that this is like the correct color of a deer. I mean, I see him all day long. part of the season usually like June which is probably when well I guess depends on where this is at but um I think they're generally like a lighter color earlier in the year 
and then they darken up is generally what we see at least that color and then I want some darker color in here but I don't want it to just be a dark blob so I'm blending it just a little bit a little bit of that darker brown color it's gonna be a little bit darker right under like the chin so it's definitely more shaded oh I can always tweak it once we get um, down to after like the head I like the layer in the color so I did a little bit of dark I kind of blended out the edges with some more of the light color Okay, Lee asks, speaking of learning, did you teach yourself from videos or take a course or look at books or I guess something else? <laughs> um, I, you know, it's been a while. Um, and I must have been, I must have read a little bit about it. I was really heavy into Pinterest back then, so I was looking at a lot of Pinterest stuff. And then I think like my husband bought me some stuff for like Christmas or something. So I started um kind of just playing around with some wool. And you know, we had I just washed some of our own wool just a little bit to play with. And I kind of just mostly just played with it and kind of learned on my own and what worked and what didn't and if I had something you know really specific in mind I might have looked up a YouTube video because YouTube is has everything And I used to draw a lot, so like proportions and whatnot always came really easy to me from drawing. Because proportions, that's one thing. Proportions and like size um, can be difficult with felting. Especially when you're learning on how to like get the needles to work, you know, the way you want them to and how to move the wool properly with your needles if, if you're doing more 3d stuff which is i did 3d stuff for a long time before i got into the um you know like the 2d like we're doing today but that also went back to my you know drawing and sketching and whatnot and but okay so i got some shading on the neck here and next we'll move on to the head detail so I need to lay a base color here. 
and then I'm going to do the um, the nose first and then the eyes. That's always the order I do like portrait stuff in. So I gotta get the nose position first and then I use the, the nose to do or the position the eyes unless I have like a real template. When I did dog portraits a lot, I I used the the heat transfer pens and I would reverse an image and trace the image out and then transfer that to um, my fabric I was working on and so I'd have the outline of the dog and that worked really well. Yeah, Lee, the biggest thing I can say if you're working on a certain project, like I, um, on all of my newer kits, I started including like a basic template just to help with like proportions because that's when I saw like people with their, you know, show me what projects they've made. I saw that's kind of where people were struggling and I just didn't think about it so much because um, I didn't really... I didn't so much use templates because I eyeball stuff. And when I started doing that, it did help me as well, like to repeat things more closely to my original designs. Um, but like printing off pictures like I'm doing is one of the easiest things to do. Um, like when I did like the Highland Cow, and that is a 2D painting. Um... That might have been one where I like traced out the outline and then used that to make the main shape of it. And I don't remember if I put that, ended up putting it in the kit or not. Okay. So I've got a main color for the the head here. I'm going to take it in a little closer. Hopefully my hands won't be too much in the way. No, it's hard to see the detail in these videos, especially the way the light is on this. I don't know if that'll help at all or I don't know, I just changed a couple of light settings. Whoop, that one does not work for me. <laughs> that one looks weird. That's like a warm. That's like a cool. Or maybe that's a cool. This is my normal one. Alright, anyways, moving on to the nose. Okay, I'm using black. Dark, dark, dark. Okay, so, my nose. So, if I take, I think I just, oh, here's a pencil use a pencil in case I want to erase it but all right so when you're doing like faces same thing with people is you have if you draw on it so there's my line down the middle through the nose and then one through the eyes that one's a little crooked but and I've got my nose spacing you could do up and down on each side of the eyes and the nose if you wanted to but you have to kind of keep this in mind since faces are so symmetrical that you want to make sure when you're doing this that you have it fairly symmetrical so like especially in this picture this deer is looking right at like right at us so the middle of the head is going to be straight down through like the middle of the nose for the most part um it's kind of off to the left a little bit so I'll bring this back so you can see it a little so just have a little bit of black and so we're coming down let me grab one of my other needles 
coming down from the middle of the head. So this is about where my nose needs to be. So a deer nose is actually very similar to like a dog's nose, which I have done a lot of. And needles trying to escape. So generally what I do for like a dog, the deer's a little bit flatter at the bottom, but it's kind of like a sideways, oh, it's like, a, what are those, almost like an upside down trapezoid. The dogs are a little bit more pointy at the bottom. But when they're this small, it's harder to get the shape and you're working with such a little bit of wool here. But generally they're wider at the top than they are at the bottom. And I think my nose is too far up. So I'm going to pull it out. That's why you don't, don't felt your wool down very hard. Another way I look at this is sometimes if you look like the nose is halfway like between the whole neck here between top and bottom like of where the ear starts so that's a good way to help with proportion as well so I want to go a little bit lower they do deer have a long face so it's just really a tad too high And at this point, I don't really want to be making any lines on my wool. And I haven't found anything that works good with, like, like making a light line that you can get rid of on wool. Kind of like, um, oh, you know, there's, like, the fabric pencils that you use, that you can use, like, white pencils when you're, you know, quilting, sewing, or whatever. But I've tried several things on the wool, and it's hard to get anything to actually write on the wool. There's a little bit darker wool right next to the nose that's really throwing me off here. Okay, that's a bit better. I'm gonna pull you off. Oh, I'm felting too hard, it's sticking <laughs> too much. Okay, so on the nose, there is always kind of like a wet spot 
which is kind of like right there ish and you can do some great highlighting um let's see I need a gray a little bit of gray okay so don't be afraid to use your grays and your white when you are shading it helps a lot so even going right, right under the black So we're going right up here now if this was a lot if this nose was a lot bigger what I would be doing is actually making like the nostrils more distinctive as well and I would do that by actually using a lighter color for the rest of the nose and making the nostrils the real dark black And I could kind of do it with this dark gray. If I want to go into super detail. But this nose is like super tiny. I mean, really tiny. And if you wanted like the your gray color to be a bit darker, you could blend it with the black too. This is so small. See, sometimes I could work on these projects for days and days and days because I can get so detailed and just spend so much time on one little spot. So I did, I kind of lightened up the nose a little bit. And then I'm adding some, a little bit of black, where those little nostrils are, which are up on the upper part and to the side. Okay, there's the little nose. And now we need to work on the eyes. So, eyes are super important. Um, eyes are super dark. So, I'm going to use just black for the eyes. And then we'll add a little highlight. So, I'm, I balled up a little bit of black here. Now, these eyes are like smack dab, like on the side of the head, almost. So, got to remember our proportions. So, there's like a line down the middle, which I could even felt kind of a little line because this isn't done. So, we got a line down the middle. It's not the best line ever. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I can see it on the camera kind of. And then we've got our eye line. So, this is like the top of the eyes is where the base of the ear starts. And then do, 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 do. So the eyes should be like in between here. So kind of right where I put that one. And just FYI, I forgot to say something earlier, but I am using almost exclusively my. 40 spiral needle for most of this project plus in the multi needle tool I was using has 540 spirals in it it just helps smooth the wool out a little bit better okay now sizing for the eyes the eyes are generally about half the size of the nose maybe a little bit smaller than that On like deer and dogs at least this one I got going is a little too low
So that's kind of the start of the eyes. And so then we have to add some like shading and things around the eyes. So generally the shading and around the eyes is what um, I take so much time on. And deer actually have pretty fancy looking eyelashes, honestly. So I've got a little bit of this really dark brown, almost black. So I'm going to use this to kind of um, go around the eyeball. Okay, before we are at 645. So, um, before we like end this, well, here, let me, I'm going to go around the other eye first and then we'll put in the highlight in the eye. That's the wrong color. Okay, so now I need a little bit of white, white. Okay, so highlight eye. This is one of the easiest things you can do to make your animals look more lifelike. And it's super easy. So I got a little tiny bit of white right here. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, the highlight in the picture is kind of like the upper portion of the eye. I'm going to do kind of a small try to do almost a small like line across which is barely a line it's just a little bit more oblong than it is a circle oop the wool swallowed that a little bit sometimes the wool just swallows up when you try to do this little tiny bit But you don't want to use too much because you don't want to have a giant white spot. So you have to be gentle. Very deliberate here. Okay, so there's a little bit, and now the key is here, is I always do two spots. I usually do one a little bit bigger, and then do a smaller one. And this is already so tiny. If I can put two in, I always do two. If it's too small, there's just one. A lot of times on like the more cartoony stuff, there's only one. Especially like when I, when we're painting pumpkins and painting faces on pumpkins. It's like when we do cartoon faces, there's usually always just one large dot in the eye. Alright, we can do this. 
All right, hopefully you can see it. There's barely, just a little tiny bit there. It's really small. So I didn't want to do a project with a really super detailed, like up and close face, so. Which I am doing a lot of detail on this face, but. So there's some detail in the eyes, make it look more lifelike. Um, and then the other thing too is the cor <clears throat> excuse me, the corners of the eyes, like kind of like where the tear ducts are. Generally, there's a little um, hi hi <clears throat> highlight in there. Sorry. So, a little tiny bit of white, and this generally I don't do so much as. Um, a super white color it might be like the the light lighter color of your main color as well oh my gosh this stuff is just disappearing I might need to get a new needle this needle might be wearing out is why I'm having troubles with it I hope you can hear all the lovely dogs barking <laughs> We like to be obnoxious when we go outside. And we have the two Great Pyrenees puppies outside, so they bark when the other dogs go out. They think it's fun. But anyways, I'm using a little bit of... Whoa, I see some funny colors on the computer. Well, if you can hear me... Using a little bit of my lightest, like, tannish color as a highlight in the corner of the eye. At least for now. Okay, so we've kind of gotten started with this. Um, and we still have a long ways to go. I'm just going to fill up a little color in these ears, a little bit more. And then we'll be back next Tuesday. Actually, before that, I'll be live on Sunday at 12 for my and that's Eastern time, if anybody's not in our time zone here. Um, so 12 on Sunday, this Sunday, the 29th, I'll be doing my live Facebook sale. Um, for the most part this month, I have, for new wise, I have... Um, new dyed homegrown wool i wanted to get done this project i've been working on that i want to offer a class for and like a kit and tutorial and whatnot but with lambing starting and other things that came up in the last few days and whatnot i haven't had time to finish it so that'll be maybe a february thing that we'll do so, but I think that's all for tonight. So if you decide you have any questions or anything, let me know. Um, and I promise you, it looks a lot better in person. <laughs> this light here is a good and a bad thing on this lamp. For sure. 
but maybe we'll uh, flip her around for a second. And there I am again. Maybe, maybe I'll hold it up a little bit. Oh, the lighting just is horrible and it's dark outside, so. Nothing, the lighting does not help at all. Almost the dark helps a little bit more, but. Anyways, we will be back next Tuesday. Um, Sunday live sale Tuesday. Again, will be felting night with me. So come join us again and we'll continue working on this project. So thanks for joining me tonight. We'll see you again soon.